been to live and streaming, new and old, returning and whatnot. I just want to do a shout out to all the people, Darren Diggle from the Whale, from Wales, Claire from Liverpool, Crystal Kenzel, Talita from the Netherlands. Hello, hello. Now with further ado, please welcome this rock and roller sensation from Sweden, heart, from hardcore superstars, Yoke. Hello, Yoke. How you doing, man? Hi, how you doing? Doing well, dude. Finally, I get you on this show, bro. Yeah. What is up yeah. with that, man? Yeah, yeah. You, we were uh, we've been recording a new album. That's why. Uh, you, I oh, know, I was, dude. Yeah. I've been like, we, we keep in touch. You know, we follow each other on Instagram. I was like, yeah. I want to get you on my show, man. But it's just, yeah. yeah. Finally, thanks to Ian, our friend Ian. Yeah. Got Love us connected. Guy. Love the yeah, guy. Yeah. Connected. Our English guy. Yeah. Very. Very English and you and yeah, it's very English. Yeah. Very English. Now you're you what time is it over there in Sweden? You mean here in our outer space? In, it's, yep. uh, it's eight o'clock. Eight o'clock. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and I, I think you're having an uh what adult apple juice, right? Is that what you're having? Yeah. Apple juice for adults. Yeah. Coffee yeah. here. Yeah. All right. Dude, that's bad. Dude, I'm a fan of the band a fan of the band. And um, the last time I saw you guys play was, uh, we talked about this earlier, was Bang Your Head in the summer of 2015. Yeah, yeah. You guys yeah. tore it up, man. You guys tore that it was, up. Yeah, that was, that was quite weird because uh, we were standing in the, our dressing room after our show and uh, all, in the, all, all the guys in the band loved Death Angel. And... Um, and all of a sudden, I, I turned around, and it was you, and uh, you were not alone coming into our dressing room. It was one more. Was it Mark? No? It was Mark. Me and Mark. Mark. Yeah. Yeah. And I was, like, turning around, and I saw you guys. It was like, Ade, Ade, Death Angel is here. No way! And I was like, whoa. So, I mean, I love your band as well. We all do. Thank you, man. Thank you. It, yeah. Feelings mutual, dude. Feelings mutual. You guys tore it up that night. And I remember you guys came to the Bay Area where I, for some reason, I couldn't make it. I had plans. You came with Michael Monroe. Yeah. In San did. Jose. But I had yeah. friends who went and they said you guys were fucking awesome. And I was like, damn, man. But I had engagements that night. But I'm like, yeah. but but it's hard for you guys to come to the States, huh? It's, it's really. Yeah. It's, it's with, in and out of you know record companies and stuff. It's hard to get a good deal over there. So, uh, but I, we, we've been doing this most of rock cruise for two times now, and I think uh, people have you know woken up, seeing us. They they want to you know sign us and stuff. So, hopefully, we're gonna do a tour again. We did we, we did one with the uh, Michael Monroe, as you said, but hopefully we're gonna do one more uh, with Death Angel. <laughs> <laughs> want to do one in Europe, bro? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's do one in Europe, and then we we'll go to the U.S. and do one together. Yeah, then we'll go to Japan where we'll have a good time. Yeah, it's yeah. a deal. All right, yeah. we'll yeah. work on it when the pandemic yeah. opens up. Cool. I, want, I want to talk about. I've been listening to your last record. You can't kill my rock and roll. And what a perfect time, because the weather the past week or so has been awesome out here, and that record is a feel-good record. Yeah. Great record. I mean, there's four songs I like. Okay. Stand out, okay? Yeah. Electric Rider. Yeah. The Others, Have Mercy On Me, and the title track, You Can't Kill My Rock and Roll. Yeah. But the, my two favorites is Have Mercy On Me and You Can't Kill My Rock and Roll. And I want to play it. I want to play the video, the official video, Have Mercy yeah. On Me. Because I, th dude, it's, when I listen to that song, man, it, it just makes me feel good. Like, yeah, it's, I don't know, man. It's, it's a very good driving rock and roll song. Yeah. It has, has a lot yeah. of, has a lot of grit and the production is really, yeah. really awesome. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I'm going to play it for everyone. And yeah. man, yeah, I'm going to do it right now. Check this Yeah, out. cool. Let's do it. Everyone, this is Have Mercy on Me from Hardcore Superstars.
The oh, reason I love that. Look at that. Look at that well, that's easy. I can make me, Chris Brogan, I can make it. a show like There you go. Skip the ad. There you go. That fall hurt like hell. That's when, when they kicked me down in the grave. Yeah, when they kicked me down in the grave, it was like I hit my head. They actually digged a grave for me to fall into. And the thing is that it was the guy, the guys in the band who digged it. Really? Yeah. So you can almost feel like they want to get rid of me, you know? It's like oh. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. They, don't li- they don't like you as much, huh? No. Okay. No. I hate my- dude, that's a great song, dude. Good hooks. Yeah. The verses yeah. are, are heavy. Then you have this yeah. catchy chorus, man. Yeah. I mean, good stuff, bro. I dig yeah. that one. You yeah. know, I dig that I one. Mean, yeah, the song is about, you know, <clears throat> don't bother so much. Just having a good time, you know. Listen to rock. You yeah, know? listen listen to rock. I mean it yeah. you know, it had some pretty dark stuff in there, like exorcism and all that stuff. I was like, Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. but you made it fun and exciting, and you know, it just yeah. makes it feel good. That's yeah. awesome, dude. Dude, yeah. who are who, who are you guys' influences, man? I mean, you guys, it seems like you have a lot of ranges in your style of music. Yeah, I mean that that's that's um uh, that's a fun thing because when you look at us, it's like oh motley crew. You must love Motley Crue. But if you look at me today, I'm, I look like Cronus from Venom. Yes. Just, yeah. 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 I love Venom. Yeah, I love Venom as well. Yeah. But that's the thing. I mean, uh, me and Ada, we grew up with, you know, we used to skateboard a lot. And uh, we grew up with bands like Anthrax, uh, Slayer, Testament, bands like that. So 
and then we also grew up with you know bands like Faster Pussycat, LA Guns, Motley Crue, stuff like that. So we we always been like in the middle, you know, with both feet in each camp, you know, one feet just, in each camp. Yeah, and just and just combine and the combine style. Combine that, yeah. And uh, because the looks maybe look like you know from the you know the LA scene and stuff, but I mean, the heart lays in the thrash scene, you know, because yeah. we all have energy. The energy, but what's yeah. cool is, I mean, this you can't kill my rock and roll album compared to your other albums. Other albums was more, you know, it's you know songs like you guys expand, like step out of the box with some acoustic stuff, like uh, "Here Comes My Sick Bitch." That yeah. song, yeah. you know, that's a great acoustic song, and yeah. there's a lot of metal overtones. But this album has a lot more poppier stuff, which is awesome. You know, I like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, you know, me too, you, me too. You kind of like made rock and metal and just throw some pop and big choruses and catchy hooks and and still yeah. have that sizzling guitar behind it, which yeah, is awesome. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. But that that's also a problem with us because uh, every time we, we release a new record, it sounds different from the previous one. And uh, if, if you talk to some, some of our fans, it's like they want... You know the next records sound like you can't keep my rock and roll, but that's not us. That's not hardcore superstar because the next album, I think we're going to talk about that later on, but it's going to be much more heavier than than you can't keep my rock and roll because we. we I mean, it's it's you must you have to involve. It's like you can't stay at the same path all the time. You have to grow as a musician, as a band. Exactly. So, uh, I mean, each album, like, it's a it's a moment captured in time, and you cannot relive that time anymore. You know, like, once you release an album, until the time you release the next album, a lot of things have happened during that yeah. time frame. You grow, yeah. you see yeah. different places, meet different people, listen to different music, so you get all this different type of thing, and put it on the next record. You know what I mean? Exactly. I mean, exactly. there's some bands who keep the same formula. Uh, prime, uh, a main example, ACDC. They're kind yeah. of a band, but it works yeah. for them, and that's what yeah. they like. Yeah, yeah. But I, I like bands that evolve and like to take risk and stuff like that. Like with this yeah. album that you guys have, it's yeah. a lot poppier than your other ones. Yeah. But I like, I like that. Yeah. You know? yeah. I like the catch of it. Yeah, hardcore superstar means risk. Risk. Where did that name come from, bro? I think that's a cool name. Yeah, it's a cool name. It actually was well our former guitar player uh, Thomas Silver. He um, we didn't have a name for the band. It was this was back in '98, something like that. And um, he came up with the band, a band name uh, Hardcore Superstar. And I was like, "Oh, that's a porn star? What do you mean?" No, no. <laughs> it's like it's like, and he was like explaining, if you want to be something, one hundred and ten percent like a hardcore. Hardcore tennis player, hardcore soccer player, whatever. But you can also be, you know, 110% superstar. So that's why hardcore superstar. But a fun, funny thing about that, because when we, we named the band Hardcore Superstar and uh, got our first album out, my mother, uh, she Googled us and uh, she printed hardcore superstar. And it was all porn. Really? And she was like, <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? What are you into? You into porn? No, no, no. We're in a band, Mark. You have to scroll down. You have to scroll down. <laughs> After all the porn stars, there's Hardcore Superstar. Then she got it. Yeah. She, is, is she's, your, not, she's not angry anymore, though. So, yeah. how, is your, was your uh, parents supportive? the band yeah, in your were, music yeah, career yeah they were they were um i mean as i said before me and Ada grow up together we we're from the same neighborhood and uh we were in different bands and uh our parents has always supported us from the start that um they, they saw that we really wanted to do this and they because we had other friends with other parents that are 
you have to get an education. You have to do that. You have to do that uh, before you play music. But our parents has always been very supported. That that's that's awesome, dude. You know, yeah. I mean, you know, my my mom wasn't, but now she is. You know, I yeah. grew up in, you know, yeah. like you just said, hey, yeah. you know, go to school, get a job, and stuff like that. Yeah, but, yeah, you know, yeah. I, I love rock and roll, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you Me know, too. You know, it, just, it just you know you got to do whatever makes you feel happy you know yeah and of course playing music makes me feel happy now yeah i was talking to a friend a while ago he he actually came into town and i went to see his band play and he actually did a tour with you guys in europe and he says you guys killed it every night chris jericho <laughs> <laughs> great guy I love the guy i love the guy yeah he's, he's, he's so fucking awesome he's uh yeah. he's one of a kind one of a kind yeah i mean yeah. good guy and that tour must have been great across europe i mean i was following it like playing good places and stuff like that yeah yeah i mean it was fun because i mean he's a big wrestling star and stuff but and i love wrestling you know ultimate warrior hulk hogan macho man whoa you're going way back <laughs> yeah, yeah going way back yeah i'm fucking old no. No, no. older <laughs> older yeah sorry older uh but i was a little bit you know i mean i have a huge respect for that guy i mean he's he's done a lot and uh when we toured together it's, it took a couple of days until we spoke with each other you know and but immediately after we started to talk together and it's like everything just was sorted out everything was easy and he's a wonderful guy. He's so easy. Yeah. 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 Wonderful guy. We did, like, we, did his, we did his podcast as well. Okay. I mean, how, other, yeah. How was, how'd that go? It went great. Yeah. Huh? It, yeah. Yeah. He, he liked the nasty parts, you know? Oh. Yeah. Hey, man. Have you guys toured with any metal bands? Like. Yeah, we toured with Machine Head. Did you really? Yeah. What year was that? Uh, it must have been 2000, 2000 maybe. Okay, I mean, how did I can't, that go? I can't remember. We, we only did like five shows or something like that. How are, how, I yeah. mean, two different styles. How did it go? I mean, were you well received and all that? Yeah, I mean, uh, Rob, he's into everything. You know, I mean, he loves, it doesn't matter if it's rock or pop or whatever. He's like, so wide in his music spectrum. Uh, I, got a, I got a funny story to tell you about that. Because back in those days, I had short hair, like more like a Sid Vicious. Okay. Six pistols, yeah. And uh, we, we hadn't met for like 10 years, 12 years. So we played in Finland uh, on the Sun's Fair, open up for Metallica. And Machine Head were on the bill. And it, it was this after party and uh, in Helsinki. And we all went there. And I, and I saw Rob. He was sitting in, the, in like in the sofa. And I was like, hi, Rob. How you doing? You remember we toured together, Hardcore Superstar? Is that you? And I got this hair now. And he said, oh, Mr. Puffhead. Because I had like... <laughs> Poofy hair, he, huh? Yeah, he, he remembered, you know, it's like, he's got good memory. But wow. yeah, he, he was cool. I remember he, he invited me after the show in London when we did the tour together. Uh, and uh, he wanted to uh, invite me for some vodka and juice. So, um, yeah, that's the, that's the memories you, you still have yeah, before, the, before, before the vodka. Before, but oh yeah, and you guys toured with uh, Motorhead too, right? Yeah, yeah. That must have been fun, you know. Let me. Yeah, legend. yeah. I have a, I have a story. <laughs> we, we yeah, we toured with Motorhead, and we were uh, were in Norway. And one morning at uh, twelve or one o'clock, our tour manager woke me up and said that, you know what. Motred's tour manager wants to talk to you. And I was like, oh, and I, and I just got a huge hangover. I don't want to talk to anyone. And so I, I got, because it was uh, Motred's tour manager, I, you know, got up on my feet and went down and we went to the, to Motred's tour bus. 
And uh, there he was, the tour manager of Motorhead. And he said, Lem, Lemmy wants to talk to you. Okay, okay. So I went up the stairs. I was nervous as shit. What, what have I done? I don't, I don't remember anything from last night. So I knocked on the door to Lemmy's lounge in the bus and he opened up. Hi, joke. You may enter. Come in, come in. Do you want, do you want something to drink? Yeah, whatever you have. What do you have? What do you have here? Come on. So I, he poured like a beer glass like this. Which, can you see this? Oh, yeah, I can see it. Yeah, yeah. Right there, right there. Move yeah. it, move it, move it, move it to your other, right there. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. 70% 70, yeah. 70 of whiskey and 30% of Coke. Wow. Yeah. So we were sitting down in his lounge and he was playing this country records that he recorded. You know, he, he was a friend with the uh, friends with the uh, Slim Jim from uh, yeah. Ray Cats. Yeah. So he recorded songs with him uh, where Lemmy was singing this like country style music and it sounded shit. But you, you uh, like, a, like a fan of Motorhead, I was sitting there just drinking my whiskey, <laughs> getting <laughs> drunker and drunker and drunker, just... Do you want to listen to some more country? Yeah, yeah, why not? So to make a long short, long story short, I was sitting there for five hours. Then I woke up while our tour manager carrying me out of Lemmy's Lounge into our tour bus. So I woke up at 12 in the morning. I went to bed at five in the evening. Jesus Christ. That's how man. it goes when you meet when you have a meeting with Lemmy and too much whiskey. Man, dude. Were you able to were, were you able to perform? That was a day off. A day? Good. It was a day off. Good. Man, you you must have been hurting that day. <laughs> I actually I remember it like yesterday. Yeah, man. Oh, by the way, Mark says hello. He just came on to the feed here. Hi, Mark. Best Hi, Mark. Best singer in the world. <laughs> he, is one, he is a great singer, man. I, have uh, to... I, I will listen to Hev uh, Heaven and Hell. Yeah. Last night. Oh, he, he sings like a fucking god. He does, he, Mark, he did. Mark and Ronnie. <laughs> yeah, man. I love that version we did. I, you know, when we yeah. did that heaven and hell and i heard the final copy i was like whoa you know i was blown away you know yeah he, he awesome did, he awesome. did uh ronnie james deal justice on that one yes he did you know let's let's uh let's talk about this new record that you, yep. you guys got done now did you guys wrote and recorded it during the pandemic yeah or we we started, we started to write the songs like uh one and a half years ago okay so it was like a little bit before the pandemic and uh, the fun thing is that we're using the same producer as we had on our self-titled album, Hardcore Superstar, as, or as we call it, the Black Album. Not to mix it with the Metallica album, but... Yeah. <laughs> Your album. <laughs> our album. Yeah. And the funny, th the funny thing is that uh, his name is Johan, typical Swedish name, but um, he's like... Uh, Swedish John McEnroe. Oh, yeah. It's like sometimes you want to hug him, and sometimes you want to hit him hard. Oh, because okay. yeah, yeah. But he's 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 uh, he's an awesome guy. He's uh, yeah. So we were because we all all of the guys in the band we love the self-titled album Hark Superstar, and we wanted to to. Uh, we haven't worked with him for like yeah 16 years well that's a long time yeah so, yeah so we called him up he's an old friend but we you know we kept in touch and stuff but um, and then we we asked him if he would you produce our new album and he was like hell yeah so yeah and it so sounds great i can't wait to hear it now with this um how, how do you guys write is it like with technology nowadays i mean you guys are all in Sweden, all four of yeah, you, yeah. you know, like with the newer bands nowadays, you know how musicians live in different parts of countries and they send yeah. files and they work on it. Do you guys actually get together as a band and write? 
Yeah, the thing is that we uh, add. He he's he's the, like the main writer in the band, so he he sends us from his studio. He sends to us, and uh, you know, because because of the pandemic, we couldn't meet. Yeah, we were like sitting at a home and and just yeah, like everyone else. Yeah, yeah. So I was I was rehearsing in my garage. While while uh, you know the other guys were in their garage, so that's that's how we we did it this this time. But it, it I mean it worked. I mean the, the the album is done and ready. So I mean it's if you wanted to do an album, you can do it. Yeah, but on your previous albums, you guys would get together. Yeah, in the, yeah, in the yeah. room. And, yeah, 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 and, yeah, and hash things yeah, out. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, yeah. You kind of need that sometimes, you, you, and you need that a lot. You know, the energy of band members being in the room. Something about the energy, just bouncing ideas, hearing the loud guitars and drums, yeah. it just makes for a a better creative that's, process. Yeah, that's the meaning of a being in a band. Yeah, I mean, it's like otherwise you can be a solo artist, but how how fun is that? You know, maybe it's it's fun for some. Yeah, I would. But as a band, I would hate it. I mean, be, be you know. I love my brothers. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, Vic, the guitar player, ripping yeah. guitar player, man. Yeah. He's great. Yeah. Dude. I mean, awesome, dude. You got you, you have a good band. Dude. Everything he everything he plays, I thought him. Oh, you did. Wow. You he know, will kill me for saying this. <laughs> you know the song Ultraviolence, the instrumental, the the yeah. off the front. Mark wrote it. He did? Ask him. When you see him, he goes, I wrote oh. that song. Yeah. That's a, one of the brutalest instrumentals ever. That dude yeah. wrote it. Sick. Dang. Hey, we have a um a fan question. Rachel, yeah. Rachel Lee from Stockholm. I'm gonna play you this um question here. Hi, you okay? Um, I was just wondering uh, for the song Someone Special, what exactly was the meaning behind the song? So is it about regretting not treating somebody right and they go on to become someone special for somebody else or you realize that they were someone special to you um yeah uh big fan just wanted to know what um what was going on with the meaning behind that song because i love it and um rock on cool okay rachel it's like um that song is about i mean that everyone in the whole world are someone special. I mean, it's like, because, I mean, Holocaust Superstar don't write like Bob Dylan poems. Like, it's like, we, we write lyrics about things that we, you know, people we meet, things that we see or whatever. It's like, we don't want to be so deep in our lyrics. It's like, so we, that song means that everyone can be someone special. Not only you, me, everyone. That's dude. You're gonna make so me what? cry. You're gonna make me cry, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you that know, was... but you know your songs. They're, they're fun songs. I mean, yeah. I, I just last night I was uh, watching an interview with you in in Finland, and you said like, you, you know, we don't write like Dungeons and Dragons. You leave that to Hammerfall. Because they're good at it, yeah. but you you write about let's have a good time or yeah. whatever is happening at that moment. Yeah. In your time. And I I think those are the best songs too. You know, yeah. Nothing, I mean, I mean, nothing yeah. against Dungeons and Dragons. I mean, Dio did it great. Yeah, but you know, but it's yeah. just not my thing. You know, life is too short. It is. Live now. Have fun. I like this yeah. man, dude. I like fucking straight rock and roller, bro. Fucking rock and roller. Hey, yeah. dude, you know what? I, I usually have my shows planned out with guests, and right. I have this planned out, but I'm going to switch it up because oh. I want to I wanna end it on a great note. I've been thinking about this. I go, man, I'm going to switch it up. People are going to trip out. Now, what I normally do at the end of my shows is I ask you, I ask my guests 12 questions. Yeah. And you got it. And a bonus question. So I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you 12 questions and you're gonna give me 12 answers. Does that cool. sound good? You okay? Yeah. And I'm getting ner I'm getting nervous now. 
don't be nervous, bro. Don't be nervous. It's, it's, it's just, a, you know, it's fun. And before I start the questions, there was a few people that tried to send in video questions, but it never came through. So if you want to throw your questions on the chat, please do. Rafael from Spain and Kimo from Sweden. All right. Here are the 12 questions. Mild or spicy? Spicy. All right. Dogs or cats? Dogs. I have a dog. So yeah, I know. I know, I, you got a dog. I know you got a dog. A movie you could watch over and over again. Return of Jedi. Good choice. Very good choice. Your biggest pet peeve. What's what? Biggest, biggest pet, pet peeve. What's that? Something peeve. that bothers you. Oh, like, like, for example, my biggest pet peeve, I don't like people who are late. <laughs> that irks me. Yeah. Uh, I don't like my mom when what? she's bothering me. Oh, oh dude. because she's, she's on me all the time. All the time. Well, yeah, it's, it's, it's your mom. Yeah, but I'm, I'm a grown-up. Okay. All right. All right. Here's a... Um, what time does your alarm go off every morning? I don't have any. I, w I wake up on my own. Six. Oh, in the morning? In the morning. Yeah. yeah. Every right. morning. That, right. that, that's how it goes when you're getting old. Got it. I'm right there with you. I wake up at six, but I don't get out of bed till like 7.30. So. Oh, that's good. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Here you go. A song you love to sing when you're alone. Sing me a song, you're a singer. Yeah, there we go. You're the first person that actually sang after I gave that question. So I'm going to give you two tokens for that one. All right. What's your dream vacation? You okay? San Francisco, three weeks. Three during du during the De Death Angel Christmas party. Oh, dude, you have to come, man. Those so yeah. when we, yeah, you'll have a me, good time. Me and Ian will come. All right, all right. Yeah. I can't wait. You let me know. We'll hang out if you come early. We'll hang out. And, of course. You know, Mark will take you fine dining. <laughs> <laughs> he's good. He's good at that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And yeah. Oh, um, one thing about you that probably annoys others. I'm 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 uh, too intense. It's, it's like I, I I got too much energy, so I I I I tend to tired people out. It's like they can't stand me because I got too much energy. You you you're like that energizer bunny that just keeps yeah. going and going, right? Yeah, exactly. So you could go until the you could go until you go to bed. Yeah. <sighs> That's a, like, lot of, that's a lot of energy, bro. Yeah. That's a lot of energy. Okay. What's yeah. your favorite what's your favorite smell? When I smell my one and a half year old little girl oh. live. Oh, that makes your yeah, heart. My daughter. That, must, that that makes your that must make your heart melt. Huh? Yeah, that's the best smell in the whole world. Yeah. An instrument you wish you could play. Vocals, vocals, sing. <laughs> Bro, what are you talking about? You have a cool voice, man. What are you talking about? No, actually, I, serious. Actually, I want to, you know, people who have seen us when we play live, I always play a song in the set on drums. I end oh, the really? song on drums, yeah. Wow. Uh, we have, yeah. Uh, I, we love to be better on drums. Okay. Yeah. Drums seems fun. It, look, it seems fun to just bash on things, but it looks I like, it looks like things, you know? Uh, yeah. Yeah. But I bet it, it looks tiring at the same time. Yeah. Too. Yeah. You know, sweaty. Like, yeah, sweaty. Sweaty. And, you know, when you're a drummer, everyone follows you, so you can't fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> That's the hard part, you know? Yeah. On a scale of one to five, you okay? How good of a dancer are you? 
<laughs> when I'm drunk, it's almost like a 10. Woo. Yeah. When I'm sober, it's like more like a two, three. Yeah. I, I, I would, you know, I've seen, I've seen your, yeah, look at you, dude. Damn, dude. You do have a lot of energy, man. You're the first person that danced on my show. I love it. Yeah. And sing. <laughs> yeah. Fucking rad, dude. Hey, <laughs> what did you have for breakfast this morning? What do you call that in uh, oatmeal? Oatmeal. Yeah. Okay. Here, here's a here's a bonus question, Mr. Frontman. Yeah. David Lee Roth or Steven Tyler? David Lee Roth. That was it. I mean, Stephen is such a good singer, but David Lee Roth. Look at all the people here tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Diamond Dave. See, I'm sure you get, you know, like I said, I've seen you live. I've seen videos. You get a lot of those influences from David Lee Roth, Stephen Tyler, and, you know, the way yeah, you yeah. move, the way you jump. Yeah. Yeah. And all that stuff, yeah. you know, that, yeah. that's, you know, that's what a lot of, to me, a lot of these new bands that I try to check out, you know, it's a lot of in their front man. So that's missing. I grew up on that. And I like that yeah. showmanship of just, you know, larger than yeah. life being rock and roll. You know, you have that. In I, your mean, band. I mean, that, that's, that's the whole thing. It's the same with Mark in the thing. You I mean, he's entertaining people. He's, he's like, not letting the audience out of sight. It's like, you have to focus. You know what I mean? The show starts now and the focus is there. The, sh the audience is your focus. Keep your eyes on them. You know, don't let them out. It's like, grab them. Yeah, man. Dude, I get it. I mean, I'm, I'm fortunate enough to have, you know, to play in a band with Mark as a front man because, you yeah. know, it's it's a craft to be a front man with us guitar players we could hide behind our guitars you know yeah. what I mean? but to engage in an audience and I, i've yeah. always been a big fan of front men who could engage and make you feel like fuck yeah you know, yeah yeah. Stuff, yeah. You know? yeah 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 you know and you that's know. that's that's diamond dave he's a good oh yeah dude yeah yeah <laughs> he can do that he can do that and he can do splits and kicks and all yeah. that stuff yeah you know? yeah but You're okay, I'm, I'm going to have to, I want to talk about this next song I want to play. Yeah. It's, it's my favorite tune from you guys. It's the title track of your, uh, your last album, You Can't Kill My Rock and Roll. And um, it, it's such a great, well-written tune. The verses are good, great. Then the chorus is very anthemic, really uplifting especially you know you do verse chorus verse chorus then you have the little breakdown then you have this big anthemic double chorus at the end and it's it's dude that song to me rock is not dead bro no rock, no it ain't. i know you wrote it as yeah. a term of like rock is not dead but the way i perceived it you can't kill my rock and roll is like Don't kill my good time, man. Don't, exactly. Do, do not I mean, the, kill my vibe. You yeah, know? exactly. I mean, the, the, the title says it all. Yeah. You can't kill my rock and roll. You can't, dude. And No one can. No one can. You know, you just, like, for me, it's like, don't kill my good time. I want to go out no, and no. hang out with some friends, listen to no. some good music. And, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's a good summertime song like you can yeah. listen to that in a convertible with the top down nice sunny weather yeah, yeah. driving through blasting it man yeah. i'm just i'm just i'm just gonna have to play it dude I'm gonna, yeah i want to play it for all the listeners out there if this doesn't make feel good i don't know what does go to bed <laughs> go to bed but i'm gonna play it and i just hope this goddamn ads on youtube don't keep coming up but you know what it's okay Let's, yeah. um, I'm gonna do it. Here we go.
Yeah. What, Didgerns, what an anthem song, bro. What I mean, an anthem song. Oh. The, 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 thing is, the thing is that, you know, every time I listen to that song, it's like, did we really do that song? Did we really write that song? It's like, I always, every time I hear it, it's like, I'm, I'm, I'm happy afterwards. It's like, if I'm down, because you are that sometimes, I'm happy after I've listened to that. And I love yeah. the video. I love the video. I mean, it's so funny to say this because I'm in the band, but I'm so fucking proud of this band. I'm so fucking proud of that song that I've done together with my brothers in the band. It's like... Dude, I am yeah. I am glad that song is written. It, it's it's yeah. It's you know when I ask you when you when I go, what's the song you like to sing when you're alone? That's the song I sing when I'm alone. Cool. When I'm driving in the car and it comes on, I'll blast it. You know, yeah. when when I'm singing in the car, I think I could sing, but I can't. <laughs> everyone just, can sing Ted. Everyone, everyone. Yeah. yeah, but I'll blast it and just sing my heart out dude my dude do it do dude. it yeah my, my wife loves that song she goes it's a killer song i go right it's just you know it, it's rock is not dead bro that song no, it's it kind of proves rock is not dead and it's never gonna be dead and you know i am glad to have you on the show i am so looking forward to your new thank record. you for having us no, thank you. I see you in, you're in San Francisco now. What happened to space? Yeah. I mean, sometimes I come down <laughs> the other guy see you on the other. <laughs> Dude, if you're in San Francisco, come visit, bro. Yeah, of course. Oh, you know? Yeah, see, see you after this. Okay, I'll see For you after this. A cup of this. coffee. Yeah. yeah. But, Yoke, thank you very much yeah. for, you know, coming on the show. Everyone, yeah. please. Check out Hardcore Superstar, man. Follow Yoke on Instagram. Yeah. Hardcore Superstar on Instagram. Check out their music. Rock is not dead. You just got to look for it. And I'm bringing it to you. Hardcore Superstars. Yoke. Fuck yeah. And we're releasing a new album called Abracadabra. Uh, we're releasing a single now in April. And uh, later on, when this pandemic shit is over, we're releasing a new album called Abracadabra. Abracadabra. There you have it. Abracadabra. New album from Hardcore yeah. Superstars. Pick it up. And when this, when we get back into touring, I hope I get to see you at a festival, at a show, or hopefully we could play some shows together, man. Ted, Ted, let's back the tape now. We're going to do a tour together in Europe, and we're going to do a U.S. tour together. And Japan, right? And Australia. And Japan. And Australia. Yeah. And South, and South America too. We'll and then we take there. Russia as well. Do, have you been? I never yeah. been. I've been. We never we been. been. Yeah. We got to do it, dude. I mean, yeah. I think it would be a good pairing. You know, I think yeah. I yeah. think we could we each of us could bring something to each other's fans. Yeah. And I, I would I would fanboy out on Mark every night. <laughs> <laughs> dude. You guys get I, I I just by knowing you and knowing Mark, you guys I I could picture you. I already picture you guys going out every night, fine dinner, wine, and just going out to town. I picture that. Like Ian, our friend Ian Golcher from UK would say, "Sounds lovely, Ted." Sounds lovely, but yeah, sounds lovely, Ted. You okay, <laughs> man? Thank you again. Thank you for thank your you music, so much. and thank you for jumping on and we'll see everyone everyone i get a shout out to i fr my friend just jumped on i just want to say hi to lita from the netherlands all right <laughs> see you guys